the trainee apprentice at Historic Helicopters and I'm with... I'm Will Joseph, I'm a race engineer with McLaren and in, in particular for Lando and Knights. Um, I'm going to ask Will some questions about his career and what he does in day-to-day -day life and everything. So the first one is, what inspired you to go into engineering? Um, probably my family, to, to be honest. I think, you know, my father and my grandfather, they were both very mechanical, very engineering, uh, and I think that has always driven my sort of passion. Um, I was always keen to be a pilot, in fact. You know, I applied to join the uh, RAF. Uh, unfortunately, I now wear glasses and they found that out in the process. Uh, and so I thought to myself, well, if I can't fly them, I will design them. Um, and so my sort of background became engineering, did that through university. Um, in fact, I was lined up to work with Rolls-Royce designing jet engines, but then McLaren came calling uh, and I've been there ever, ever since. So you just said that your family are in it. What made you interested in flying? So I think, I mean, you know, the love of flight, I think, is something that a lot of kids who look up to the skies and they see airplanes fly over sort of, um, you know, bond, bond with. Um, my grandfather and I used to make gliders a lot out of balsa, and so it stemmed from that. Then I started flying ready control airplanes when I was younger, and it kind of snowballed from sort of smaller to larger to larger. Um, I was in the cadets, uh, like I say, intending to join the RAF, so that's where the sort of the passion for flying came, came, came from. Going on from there, what you, what's your favourite like, aircraft, and what, what's the reason for all that? It's a tricky question because there are just so many. Yeah. I think of the ones that I've flown, um, um, the Lynx now is just top yeah. match. I was going to say beforehand uh, the, the Hughes 500, which is known in the sort of uh, civil world, you know, is a sports car of helicopters. Uh, the Lynx is pretty cool and I think Alta performs that, so, mm -hmm. so that, that now. Um, I've been very privileged to fly with the Red Arrows and that was a fantastic experience. So, you know, each aircraft has its own nuances and, and reasons to like, like it, but the Lynx is pretty cool. What did you like about the Lynx? I think uh, the power, the manoeuvrability, and I think because it's, it's historic, I sort of, you know, you sort of look back to the days as a kid when you looked up to these aircraft flying around, and I think that's what kind of brings the emotional attachment back. From there, how did you get to where you are today in terms of both aviation and Formula One? So Formula One, like I said, engineering degree as a background. Uh, I then was sort of phoned up by a friend of mine uh, and his boss was after someone to come and join the team. This was before the days of graduate schools, which are now very strong. We run very good internships, uh, summer internships and year-long internships and graduate schools, but this was before that. Uh, I ended up doing a, a five-week placement over summer and within that placement, they offered me a full-time job uh, and I've been there ever since, which is uh, 18 years now. Oh, okay. Going on from there, obviously, in your career now, you're doing very well in the car itself. Is that making your job harder because of the success or easier? It's a tricky question because I would like to say it has no difference. At the end of the day, we're trying to do the best we can with the equipment we have on every single day, whether that be we're starting from the back of the grid or whether we're not we're starting from the front. Inevitably, though, the further or the closer to the front you get, um, you know, there's, there's, there's external pressure, there's expectation, sometimes there's in, in, internal pressure. Um, but actually, I think as a team, we're very good at acting as a team together, trying to ignore that pressure, and like I say, go back to just trying to do the best job you can every day, and an even better job the next day. You know, every yeah. day is a learning to do it better next time. So it's just learning how to try and work to your best every time. We have a very strong culture of reviewing uh, and going back and doing it better. So even after a good race, we'll go back and say, well, what worked well and what didn't. And often our worst races are where we learn the most because they offer us the best insight as to, you know, what could we have done better? Uh, what changes can we make to our procedures or to our communication to prevent those mistakes yeah. occurring again? Okay, so learning from... The problems exactly. moving forward. That's right. So from there, continuing on with progress, <laughs> where would you like your career to progress after F1? Uh, after F1, to be honest, I'm not sure where we'll ever be after F1. I don't know. I think it's it's an industry where you get hooked in, mm. and 
and you know I've, I've worked in the pit lane now for this is my four, 14th season um, it's kind of all I know um, you know my I like uh, being on the island I like being amongst the car I like being on the pit wall I like uh, working with the team of people I'm not sure I could do a desk job so honestly I think I'll be, I'll be within F1 for my career what, what brought you to fly? Um, as a kid, as you mentioned earlier, I've always had helicopters flying over my house, aircraft, military. So I would always run to the window, look at them and be like, oh my god, it's whatever it is. And it was just so interesting to hear the noise and then know where it was, try and figure out what it was as well. And it just, it's a very fun memory. And what is it about historical hel helicopters that's your favourite part of your job? It's something different. You don't find it often, it's very one of a kind and you don't do the same job every day so it's always like changing. So I've been in the whirlwind for quite a few weeks now but it's never boring because even though I'm doing that I'm then working on the links or the sea thing and it's like, it's just very interesting. Yeah, I, I get it. I think your worlds are very similar, yeah. just in different areas. Mm. And so what background brought you here to where we are? I have zero background in aviation at all. My whole family are in building and carpentry and all that lot, so I've just kind of winged and gone. So then through that I then had my BTEC in college and that basically got me started. I came here for a um, few weeks last year in the past few years and I ended up liking it. I applied for the job and now here I am. So well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And I think I'd like to say a huge thanks to everybody here who's given me the, uh, the honour and the privilege to fly t today and it's greater to hear your story. So earlier you said that you do apprenticeships at other schemes. Is there any schemes to bring people into the industry that haven't ever been involved before? So STEM is a hugely important thing for McLaren and we have a sort of a wide range of opportunities at various different le levels. Uh, I'd encourage anyone that's interested to go and visit our website at mclaren.com. Uh, there's a careers page on there that has information about all the schemes we offer and uh, sort of deadlines and the dates of when, when to apply. Uh, and there's various things on offer, but it's, uh, you know, it's very important to us, you know, uh, um, recruiting and developing the next generation of people from all backgrounds and, and diversities uh, is very important and sort of inclusion is a core part of our culture. Uh, I mean, generally, motorsport has been a male-dominated environment for some time, but McLaren is in incredibly supportive of uh, females entering. Uh, in 2023, we launched 60 Scholars, which was a scheme to try and encourage young women to join and follow their dream of being future le leaders within McLaren. And that's a scheme that is continuing now. And again, I encourage people to look, look at the website and find out more about that uh, opportunity.